Just as we've almost had enough of Avengers Age of Ultron stuff being jammed down our throats, something new comes along and just totally blows it out of the water. So how many of you out there have immediately watched this trailer again after it was done the first time? I mean, it's hard not to. It's just one of those things that begs you to watch it over and over again. Of course, I'm talking about the Star Wars The Force Awakens trailer number two, and it opens up with this speeder in the desert, and it comes across this crashed Star Destroyer. And immediately, as soon as I saw that, I had to check myself, because that imagery is just so majestic. Now, I'm not like the casual fans out there. I am sadly a fanatic, so I've been reading speculation threads as to what possibly could have been seen in this trailer. And the image of the crashed Star Destroyer was in that list. So I already had a good idea then as to what we could possibly see in the trailer, but that doesn't take away, it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the trailer. I mean, I did enjoy seeing the X-Wings in a new environment with new special effects being applied to them. It was nice to see a shot of the new Chrome Stormtrooper that I believe people are calling Captain Phasma, possibly played by Gwendolyn Christie. And obviously Finn and Rey are shown throughout the trailer. In a few shots, we get to see Kylo Ren, and we get to see his helmet. That was great. Then the trailer closes with the Millennium Falcon being chased by TIE fighters in the desert. And it goes into this wreckage. Ah, very reminiscent of Return of the Jedi. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did look great. And then we hear Han say... Chewie. We're home. And my eyes just went. Yeah, baby. <laughs> wow. Okay, so those are my initial impressions of what this trailer was. Uh, I'm going to talk about some speculation now. So if you don't want to hear possible spoilers of what the plot may be, you may want to stop now. So the trailer opens up with dialogue that was from Return of the Jedi where Luke was talking to Leia and how the Force is strong in his family. And it ends with him saying, you have that too. Now, I listen to it again and it does sound like it is a new recording of the whole bit of the Force is strong in my family, my father had it, I have it, my sister has it. But it easily could have been taken from Return of the Jedi. All I'm taking away from that is that it does seem and it's highly probable that he's saying that to Rey, which we believe is Han and Leia's daughter. The line, you have it too, I guess he could be talking to Finn. It's just in the trailer it seemed like he was talking about his family. What? You don't think that Luke could have had a son? of that lineage? No, it's just, we've been getting reports that, and it sounds like, Luke has been in isolation for a long time. And that would make it difficult for him to find somebody to, uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, get something done. Well, he could have adopted, you know. <laughs> yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. And then he leaves to go in isolation Unless the kid grow up to become a stormtrooper, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. The common belief is that Rey is Han and Leia's daughter. That's what's being speculated all just right now. It may, it may not turn out that way. But we do see Kylo Ren in this trailer, and it looks like all the shots come from one particular sequence. We see him swing his cross hilt lightsaber in one shot. We see him with a bunch of stormtroopers on what looks like some kind of raid with moisture evaporators. We see a crowd of people in front of the 
the stormtroopers. And then we see a shot of him, and it looks like the hilt is on his saber is gone, but it's just it's just the angle, you know, it's just the angle in which we see it. It's still there. And he appears to be either uh, force pulling or force pushing someone. And it indicates that he is already trained in some aspect of the force. The current buzz is that if he is played by Adam Driver, then he starts off as an X-Wing pilot that turns bad, and he has this unhealthy obsession with Sith artifacts, and which would explain you know, his appearance and the way his lightsaber is. My only question of that is of time, because if he does start off as an X-Wing pilot, the remaining Empire seems to warm up to him rather quickly because they give him stormtroopers to command as well as his own ship. And I only bring that up because all the episodes have been told in this condensed time form where the timeline appears to be one continuous sequence of events, which is a format that I believe was detrimental to the prequels because of the composition restrictions. But that's a different video. I can talk all day about this, and there are going to be many analysis videos out there about this. But I want to talk about three main shots, and that's number one with Darth Vader's helmet that we see in the beginning. It looks like it was taken soon after it was burned in Return of the Jedi. Which begs the question, why didn't Luke wait around <laughs> to make sure that it got completely incinerated? I mean, did he really have to get so quickly to that party in the trees? Or maybe, you know, Luke did take it himself. But if he didn't, then it just opens up a floodgate of speculation as to who has it, how did they get it, and wow. The second shot I want to talk about is this shot here of the stormtroopers in formation. A couple of things is that it obviously shows a new empire tapestry in the background. And they appear to be on a snow planet of some kind, very reminiscent of Hoth. And finally, who is that character standing in the background? Some kind of new ruler? Finally, the closing shot of Han and Chewie on the Millennium Falcon, where he says that they're home, is easy to assume because we saw them on the desert planet that he may be referring to Tatooine. There are some sketchy reports out there that the desert planet that we've been seeing is, or it may not be Tatooine. I mean, uh, I, I tend to think that it is, but it's possible that it's not. It doesn't affect the overall story that we know of so far, at least. And the second point about that that I want to talk about is that they are both holding their weapons, which would indicate that, well, there were very early reports that Han was not the owner of the Millennium Falcon in this episode. So what this could possibly mean is that, you know, Han and Chewie have just stormed back onto the Falcon with the intention of taking it back. And that's why he's saying, we're home and why they would have their weapons drawn in their own ship. My final verdict is that it was a good trailer. It did a good job in getting people excited for the movie. I just, for me, I felt like it wasn't as powerful as some of the trailers were for the prequels. And I just mean the trailers for the prequels, because the trailers for the prequels were spectacular. All right. If you've liked what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe! <laughs>